There was quite a response to this uh, photo cartridge. I was actually uh, surprised, like uh, over almost a thousand uh, comments on this one and uh, lots of questions. And so um, I feel that there's a need to answer some of these questions and uh, best way to do it is via this video because uh, to be honest, I lost track in answering and reading all the comments because simply it's too much. All right, then let's get started. So the first question, uh, and this was asked many, many times, sensor size. And uh, yes, you're right. Uh, all the comments basically mentioned that uh, the sensor is much smaller than uh, the original uh, 35 millimeter film. And what this means in uh, practice is if you imagine this being your 35 millimeter frame uh, original frame and our sensor the raspberry pi sensor just captures a tiny bit uh, of that frame um, and this has the effect of being zoomed in quite far so uh, if you think in terms of opening angle if this was uh, the opening angle of the standard uh, 50 milli millimeter lens of this camera uh, then using uh, this sensor will result in a much uh, smaller opening angle, maybe like so, or even more. And um, there's a simple way to uh, kind of uh, calculate the opening angle. Uh, you can uh, calculate an equivalent focal length. And basically um, the equivalent focal length is determined by the ratio between uh, of uh, the 35 millimeter film and uh, the Raspberry Pi sensor. And this is roughly 10 times. So the film is 10 times bigger than the sensor. And you simply multiply uh, the original focal length, which is 50 millimeters here by that factor. So we're going from 50 millimeters uh, originally to 500 millimeters uh, in case of the Raspberry Pi camera, which is quite an insane amount of zoom. And uh, like I said in the video, and I tried to show that it's hard to aim at things and uh, it's a bit wiggly because uh, of the insane amount of zoom, like just small changes in orientation uh, mean already quite drastic changes in the image. And so, yeah, I agree. It's not optimal, uh, small sensor size. And um, I'm also not happy with that. And uh, yeah, therefore, of course, the next question was, why not buy a bigger sensor or uh, take one out of uh, old DSLR cameras? There are several issues with that. So uh, first one is cost. So these sensors are really expensive full frame sensors. You can sometimes buy them. Um, you might get way cheaper if you steal them out of DSLR cameras, but still it's rather expensive, much more expensive than the Raspberry Pi sense. And so, uh, yeah, cost is one uh, problem, but uh, another problem is uh, the secretive nature of the uh, sensor manufacturers. So, um, even if you can buy one of these chips, it's quite likely that you will never see the data, ship, uh, data sheet of that chip. Um, so that's a really big issue. So you don't know the pinout, you don't know how to configure these uh, sensor chips. And even if you got somehow the data uh, sheet of that chip, it's still a real challenge to get decent images out of uh, these chips. So remember, these chips are analog uh, devices mostly, and uh, there are so many knobs uh, you need to fine tune to get a decent quality image out of these image sensors. And this is almost impossible to do without support from the sensor manufacturer. Of course, sensor manufacturers are not really keen on uh, supporting I don't know, some random YouTubers uh, slash hackers. So it's very difficult to do. Will you sell it or do a Kickstarter of it? Short answer to that is no. So I'm in the business of sharing my ideas and concepts and along with that uh, build plans and source code. 
uh, I make them freely available uh, to everyone so that you can rebuild my stuff and uh, tinker with it, uh, improve it and share it again. And this is the kind of thing I'm uh, doing. And um, I'm not in, in the business of making products in, in that sense. And making a product is uh, quite a different challenge uh, compared to making a prototype. And uh, yeah, this is also quite a challenging thing to uh, productize because there are still many challenges like user interface. Um, how do you uh, yeah, present the thing to an end user? How do you interface with the controls of the camera? And uh, how do you communicate this crop factor and high zoom range, which is, in my opinion, already uh, prohibitive to, to sell to, to someone as a product. So yeah, it's a tough sell, I would say. And so I'm not planning to do this anytime. But if someone of you wants to pick that up, um, feel free. I would be happy to see uh, someone taking up that challenge. Image quality. So of course, it's a cheap uh, CMOS sensor from uh, the Raspberry Pi camera, having small pixel cells and um, well, giving the image quality you would expect from such a sensor. So don't use this to replace your DSLR camera or even your smartphone, decent smartphone camera, because it will deliver you uh, probably worse image quality. Um, so some properties of the original camera, like uh, the aperture and uh, the depths, uh, blurriness, uh, you will get also with this camera but everything else from the original film camera will be lost, like the film grain and uh, these things. So it's still, I think, an interesting kind of quality you get from this here, but please don't expect this to uh, replace uh, your DSLR and do your, I don't know, holiday photos with this. This is a fun toy and a really interesting toy, but I wouldn't use it for uh, everyday uh, use cases. So yeah, that's basically my opinion on this. Camera controls. Um, many uh, commenters noted that uh, the camera controls of the original camera are mostly lost. And this is true in a sense. So uh, for example, the uh, exposure time here, shutter time, that's not used at all, this is true. And um, also the uh, film forward uh, mechanics here are not used. Um, what is actually used is the aperture. So that's working as before. And also uh, the focus control is working as before. Um, and uh, yeah, many uh, commenters asked how I uh, did the video shots. So I set uh, the camera in bulb mode, which means that the uh, shutter is open as long as I press the button here. And this is of course perfect for doing videos. Uh, there's no issue with that. But for still photos, this is um, another question. So um, I did not yet implement the software for doing still photos and it's uh, a bit challenging. So there are many reasons for this. So for example, how uh, will the Raspberry Pi camera here notice when the shutter has been uh, pressed? One thing you could do would be to uh, use simply light. So when the shutter opens, of course, uh, you could sense that there's some light on the sensor and then uh, do a photo. Um, that would work in theory, but there are still some uh, quite significant hurdles there. So uh, for example, the auto exposure uh, that the sensor uses will be pretty uh, confused by this because it starts pitch black and then the shutter opens and uh, gives full light onto the sensor. So it's a bit similar um, as with your eyes. If you start in a pitch black room and sit there for a while, 
and then somebody turns on all the ceiling lights and everything, you will be blinded for a second or so. And the same thing will also happen with the, th the sensor because the auto exposure will need some time to adapt to uh, the change in brightness. So this might uh, require some deeper adaptations to the way the auto exposure works here. And um, also the triggering by uh, uh, light is not yet implemented. So this is a bit challenging, but I think it's doable. So especially if you uh, set the camera here to maybe one second exposure, uh, there should be enough time for the Raspberry Pi to notice that the shutter is open and then also maybe even uh, adapt the brightness of uh, the auto exposure. But uh, it's pretty much uh, impossible to to use this uh, film insert in, I don't know, it's one thousandth of a second uh, setting. So that's not going to happen with uh, this camera here, uh, unfortunately. Still images. Yeah, basically, I just I mentioned uh, most of the uh, things with or the issues with uh, still images. Still, I think it should be uh, possible to get this implemented rather decently. Um, one of the commenters uh, of uh, the original video mentioned that he was working uh, 20 years ago at a company called Silicon Film, which basically tried to make this as a product. And they actually had a rather smart uh, approach to this. So uh, they had the same problem. They needed to monitor or find out when the shutter was pressed. And the commenter said what they did was they had a microphone that picked up the noise of the mirror flipping up. And this is, of course, uh, before the shutter actually opens. And so uh, they used that to re reset the image sensor. And then the shutter opened exposed the image sensor and then they waited a bit and then read out the image. This is of course a very smart and elegant way to do this, um, but it's also quite tough to do with a Raspberry Pi. So first of all you need a microphone and then it's really really time sensitive. Like I imagine it's in the millisecond uh, region uh, the time between mirror flipping up and shutter opening. So it's really delicate. And on top of that, you need really fine grain control over uh, the, the image sensor here, which is sometimes a bit uh, complicated in, in case of the Raspberry Pi camera. So it's a very interesting approach and a pretty smart one, I think, but uh, it's quite tough to do this with my cartridge. Build instructions. This was also asked uh, quite a few times. Um, so how to build this cartridge? And um, actually, it's not really that complicated. There are not many parts, but it's true uh, that I didn't mention uh, how these things are wired up and how to exactly uh, fabricate uh, the mechanics of this piece. And uh, yeah, therefore, I will post another video uh, shortly where I uh, simply tell all the details that are needed to really copy this thing and build one on your own. All right, yeah, I think these were the most, uh, let's say, often asked questions in uh, the or original video. And yeah, thanks again for all uh, to all the commenters, um, because yeah, this gave quite some interesting background uh, of, of the history of similar projects and also some nice inspirations. So yeah, please continue uh, commenting on my video. This is really helpful for me to yeah, get more info and more opinions and more ideas, which uh, I really like. All right, then uh, thanks a lot for watching and see you soon. Bye.